So this next project is um, essentially a modern china cabinet. Um, this was a, a photo a customer sent me and it's not an exact duplicate of the design. We changed a couple things, mainly dimensions and whatnot. But um, that is kind of how this shop functions. If you've been watching the channel, you know that. Uh, and if you do woodworking for people, a lot of times they're going to approach you with a photo of something else and it's a matter of, of replicating it. But regardless, that was kind of the design was based off of what the customer found online. Um, and this is a three cabinet unit. So each cabinet is built separately, but they're essentially tied together by the fact that there's a continuous base on the piece. So I do have some thumbnails of the, the finished piece in place because obviously now that I am ahead of uh, posting on YouTube, I won't be having the projects in the shop anymore because this has been um, out of my shop for a couple weeks at this point. So the intros will probably be a little bit shorter without the piece. But like I said, this I believe this is gonna be about three parts. And this first part is mainly gonna entail building those three main carcasses for the cabinets. Um, rough dimensions of those was a little over six foot by about two foot wide and about 20 inches deep. Obviously those dimensions were contingent um, on, on the customer. And this is a standalone piece of furniture. I kind of built it as if it was gonna be a, a, a built-in. That was just the style I decided to build it in, but it is a standalone piece of, uh, of furniture. So I will have plans available for this. I don't have them done quite yet. I'm hoping to have them done by the time the last upload of this video is done. So if you're looking for exact dimensions in order to build this, I will have plans available on my Etsy page. But um, I myself am a visual learner and usually I can watch videos and kind of um, glean enough of the information in it to make it myself. So it's, it's um, if you don't feel like buying the plants, I don't think you need it in order to make something like this. It's more so if you want exact uh, measurements, but that's basically where we're at. And like I said, the second video will probably be making the doors and the base. All of that was out of solid, solid oak. And then the last video is usually kind of the catch all for leftover finishing work and, and whatnot. So this project starts like most projects and that's going to be breaking down sheet goods. So I'm building this out of three quarter inch cabinet grade oak veneer plywood. Um, I chose oak because it's going to be stained. Maple plywood does not take stain very well. And to be perfectly honest, the quality of this cabinet grade plywood, even though the price has gone up, the quality has gone down um, in the past couple years. So I especially would be hesitant to be staining maple nowadays. It comes out blotchy in general. And um, the, the seams and the panels of these are, are pretty noticeable. So I think you'd have some issues, which is why I chose oak. So basically I'm just starting out by making my, my edges, which are 20 by 76. And I have um, six of them because it's three cabinets. So these are going to be my two sides. You can see I rough cut them down to size. I'm gonna put a dado at the top and the bottom for the top as well as the bottom shelf, and then one in the center. So this customer wanted the, the shelves to be adjustable, which I'll explain later why that isn't one of my preferences. But at the same time, I won't tell people that I won't do things. I'll warn them why it's not a great ideal, but I, I will essentially um, do what they want unless I know for a fact it's going to completely fail. Um, but that's basically what I'm doing now is I'm putting a dado on the top and the bottom about an inch up from the base. And then there's going to be um, a shelf in the middle to, to pull the cabinet together, but also because she wanted some of the storage on the bottom to be hidden. So the doors have a panel that hides stuff on the bottom. And this shelf comes right to the top of where that, that hidden portion of the door is. So in order to cut this middle dado, it came up past my table saw can do 26 inches. And this I believe was at around 28 or 29. So there's easier ways to do this, but at this point, this was right after I moved, so I didn't have a lot of stuff set up in the shop. So I just set a stop on the radial arm saw, and I cut um, the central dado this way because I couldn't do it on the table saw. And I have a router jig for it, but I broke part of it in, in the move, so this was the fastest way I could get this done. 
So you can see I just I already have these drawn on here. I'm using a stop so they all come out identical. So I'll use one with marks and then set up the stop and cut the rest of them the same. Um, the cut on this radial arm saw is pretty deep. It's about 16 inches, but like I said, these panels are about 20. So I did have to flip it and finish these cuts, but that's essentially how I got these um, central dados. So on the backer for this, I could only find quarter inch oak veneer ply when I went to go get these supplies. I usually just cut a rabbit in the back and put half inch, a half inch backer. I could only find quarter inch, so what I decided to do was just make a groove. And I had um, been doing a little bit of research and I heard that it's easier to align the cabinets when you have a groove versus a rabbit. So that's what I decided to do. So three of these panels will get the groove on um, the front side and three of them will get the, the groove on the back side. If you cut the groove on the exact same side on all of the panels, they'll come out, you'll have six identical sides. So at this point, I break this into uh, three sections. So essentially three of them I'm sliding through top first and then three of them I'll flip and slide through bottom first and that will give you um, opposing gro grooves on the, the three boards. And usually these, I make every, on three quarter inch ply, usually all my dados and all of that are three eighths of an inch. It just keeps the math simple to go about halfway through through the piece. And then I'm um, have the toppers and the bottoms, and that's once again going to be sheet goods. So I'm just ripping them into one continuous width, and then I could section them out on the radial arm saw into the desired pieces. So I usually do this to get the most out of the piece. So I believe I cut probably the smaller dimension first, and then this is for the backer. The quality of the, the wood when I went to get this was awful. You could see there's marks and stains on this, this oak ply, but that was all that was available. Luckily, this backer is going to not only be on the back, but I could sheet this, this side that's not super nice to the, the complete back side of the cabinet, and you, you didn't see any of those marks, especially since this was stained. But this is just once again cutting out all these pieces. It's essentially in the beginning is just cutting everything out, cutting all the dados, and then the assembly goes pretty quickly after that. I'm using blue tape on this because it does make a little bit of a difference when cutting on the radial arm saw. You don't have as much tear out. And then from the groove in the back to the front, these are going to have inset doors, so I gave myself a solid inch to play around with in the front, even though the doors are only going to be about three quarters of an inch, but that's what that mark is for. So I can measure to that mark, which is about a little less than 18 and a quarter, and then that will be um, the depth of all of my, my cabinets. So like I said, these are about 24 inches wide with the 3 8 inch dado, so uh, 24 inches wide, 3 8 inch dado on both sides. So the shelves were about 23 inches, um, accounting for that dado to get it to 24. And then like I said, 18 and a quarter is what I cut all of these to. So I'm only doing three to start because there's only three fixed shelves, the top, the bottom, and essentially roughly at the middle, there's, there's another one. Now the pr other problem about this plywood is you can see at one part I have 11 um, 16ths and then on the other side it's it's a heavier 11 16ths. I never used to have this much of an issue with this plywood because it is a nicer grade of plywood but that made it so where I had originally measured for my dados a bunch of them were too narrow so I had to go through and take off a little bit of material on all the sides of my shelves. Now I'm showing this because this is something I think a lot of people are going to encounter with, with this grade of ply that's kind of on the market nowadays, whereas it's just different thicknesses throughout the sheet. I mean that's not super uncommon, but this is quite a bit of a difference. It's almost a sixteenth of an inch. So you can see I have a stop set up and I'm just removing a little bit of material. And then what I'll do when I put it together so you don't see the cutout is I'll put the cutout side facing the bottom, and then at the top of the shelf, I'll put it facing the top so you don't actually see it. It was a quick fix in order to avoid having to recut all of those dados and hope that you get all the alignment uh, correct. 
So then like you can see, I'm using a, a, a brad gun to kind of tack everything in place. These are essentially just held together with glue at the moment. The glue is gonna be stronger than any hardware you could use anyway. Um, but I'll wheel tack stuff in place and then ratchet straps really come in handy for stuff like this. So I could wrap it, stretch them together and then I'll put them vertically in the shop, make sure everything's square, measure for square and then let them dry. These cabinets are one of those sizes which are just wide enough and big enough to be annoying to move around the shop. So this was this at this portion of gluing it together is heavily edited. It took a lot of finagling to get it that way. So in order to do the other two, what I decided to do is you could see I have the panels kind of clamped to the side and then I was going to assemble them vertically. That also turned out to be a little bit of a hassle, but it was a hassle the other way as well. So you can see I just have the, the backer panel set into place and then I could add the, the one side as well and then just assemble it that way. And I did that for the, the other sides as well. The, the thought process behind this also was since that central one is now square and dried, I let it dry overnight, then um, attaching these panels to the side would, would help square them up as, as well. So that was essentially the, the thought process here. This did work pretty well, but like I said, bigger cabinets like this, there's really no getting around the fact, especially if you're working by yourself, that they um, are a juggling act to, to get together. But you can see it's essentially the same project, the same process, putting those sides on, adding my, my top, my, my center, and then the bottom as well, and then um, clamping it so that it could, it could dry. And then that's what those three look like. And then that's obviously the base, but the order of operations in this, I, I stuck with just the cabinets for this one, so it's a little bit out of um, chronological order. I had obviously built the base at this point. So because I made through dados on this, I have a little bit of a gap in the front because my shelves are obviously set back for those inset doors. So I had milled up a bunch of, of red oak, which you'll see in another video, in order to make the base and the, the frames for the doors. And I just cut these down to the thickness and the width of that dado and glued them into place. Obviously sand them, and there's glue everywhere at this point. I'll sand these flush, and with the doors in place especially, we'll never really notice it, but it's better than having a gap. So like I said, there's two adjustable shelves up top and one um, down below. In order to draw this, uh, drill out the shelf pins, I just use pegboard. You can see I have it marked which ones I'm, I'm drilling. I have it clamped in place. And then on the back side of this panel, I have marked as well so that I could just go through and, and put all these shelf pin holes. I don't love shelf pins just because, and you'll see when I start to do the doors, these top part of the plywood, it's just not great material. So it bowed quite a bit and it made doing the doors quite a bit of a pain. So if you have fixed shelves, it usually keeps those sides fairly true. And then I just had a scrap piece. I'm not checking for the shelves at this point. I'm checking to make sure that the shelf pins were all on the same plane and the shelves sat flat. So then to finish up the fronts of these, I had to edge band all of the edges, which is what I'm doing. On a piece of um, furniture that would get a lot of wear and tear, I usually add a face frame to the front, a solid wood face frame, something like a china cabinet and the customer already told me she's putting stuff in it and probably not gonna open the doors for quite a while. Um, it's okay to put something like edge banding on the front. It won't really get super messed up. So the top and bottom of these are set back as well but I want my doors to sit on in um, inside this bottom. So I'm just adding a solid oak piece to the tops and bottoms, and I like to do that with splines on both pieces. And then um, the spline material is going to be quarter inch oak, which I have because I have that for the backer as well as the doors. So you can see I'm just cutting um, a spline, keeping the depth the same for the oak. And then um, the material you could see I have on the table, the table saw. I'm off camera at this point, checking the fit, just making sure it works. And then I could just cut a bunch of pieces and then and then glue those, those tops and bottoms in place. I'm only filming doing the bottom, but it's the exact same process for, for the top. 
So you can see how that spline fits in both grooves, and once this is glued in place, it's an extremely strong joint. So I just kind of teeter them off the edge of the base in order to, to get these aligned as, as good as possible. And then I don't think I film it, but I do get some clamps on these to hold everything in place. And then at this point, I have sheet goods so same process for the shelves. I ripped them down to one dimension and then I could go through and cut them all. Now this is not the safest cut when you have this much material canter leaving off one side of the blade, but you can see I have a stack of material that this is riding against on my table and you just have to make sure to take these cuts slowly and you could cut material pretty easily like this on the, the table saw. And then I have to go through and edge band all of these edges as well with all of these shelves, um, three per piece, so there's nine total. This was a process. What I like to do is edge band um, one width and one length because this will add a little bit of material to your shelves. And then I like to measure, cut the two sides so they're close, and then edge band the rest. Um, and that's, that's what that looks like. So this is just kind of showing you all the shelves. So you'll see this is what the doors will look like um, in the next video. And that's what all of the shelves look like in, in place with the base as well. And then obviously, like I said, I have some finished photos, which will also make it into the thumbnail.